What's going on, Fire Nation? It's your boy Rico, along with my little big cousin G Baby and our boy Raul the Zookeeper. And we are the Friendly Fire Podcast, the hottest podcast on either side of Mississippi, episode 56, baby. As you can see, G Baby out there protecting uh, and serving. <laughs> Got two pianos for sale, two for the Let's go. <laughs> Zoo out there just had to feed the wildlife. So, you know, he's he back in his office. How are I'm we doing the, today, not- fellas? I'm in the car, a cop just rolled by, got my light on, my parents told me not, never to do that. <laughs> I might get a, might get thrown in jail right now. You gonna get arrested <laughs> in your driveway? That's crazy. <laughs> that is definitely happening. So we almost got arrested when you was dropping me off that one day. You wrote, yeah. he had a, it was like 12 o'clock. You know, it was like, it was like one. He did like a rolling stop, like a block away from my house. Cop no, waited yeah, till we pulled like, on your block. It was like on my block. We waited. He waited till he pulled right in front of my house before I could touch the handle. Woo woo. We He's in there. Blocks of ice. I'm mm. sitting there. Like, hey. He was like, he was like, can you grab my registration? I said, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, I cannot. <laughs> like, that was the dude's trip. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, twelve. Yeah. I have to come around here and grab it himself. I'm not touching nothing. I'm the night here because I... <laughs> I was about to put the recliner down and everything. Like, I guess we chilling. Oh man, but now, uh, how y'all doing today in general? Wellness check. I'm doing good. good. Doing good. Zoo, how, 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 how was uh, how was how was Mr. Feet the Reptiles? How was that going? I know sometimes that's like a task uh, for you, it usually is, but no, it went smooth. Uh, right now, I got my uh, dog on house arrest. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, <Got him> locked <laughs> down. <laughs> he finished the rabbit, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, where's he at? It's been like 15. Because I, I let him out with him and his and my sister's dog. So his cousin, we call him. And uh, they go out together. But uh, my sister's dog came in. And usually it's my sister's dog who stays out a little after. Uh, so my sister's dog came in. I still waited like maybe like five minutes or so. And I was like, where is he? And I went on check on him. And he, he was like, I saw him eating on something. And we have a tree that drops blueberries. Mm-hmm. So I thought that's what he was eating. And when I got close, he picked up whatever he was eating. He ran away. So I have, like, got, soccer balls. <laughs> I have like soccer balls in the yard, you know, because I'm Mexican or whatever. So <laughs> I picked one up and I, and I chucked it at him. So he dropped whatever he had and he ran away. Then that's when I got close and I saw he only had the head. Oh. That, that dog and is a savage. I, yeah, I put him inside and that's when I looked or, around where he was initially at when I first saw him. And that's when I saw the, the rest of the body. So, uh, so is yeah. that like you gotta take him to the vet for that or something? Because it's a wild animal. Or... No, nah, no, nah, it's just a rabbit. Um, uh, mm. what was it? I think last month. Yeah, it was last month. I took him to the vet because he got, he got bit by a rat because he killed oh. the rat. Well, it was a mouse because we don't really have rats here. It was like a woodland mouse. It was like white. It was almost mm. like a hamster oh. type. Mm. But so it wasn't a rat or anything. But he got bit by on the like on the lip. Mm. So I did take him to the vet. But the vet told me basically he was fine that uh, unless it was like an actual rat or like a raccoon or something that could have rabies, then yeah, yeah but like, like rabbits street animals. Are fine. Yeah, because he's killed he's killed rabbits before and like uh birds and stuff, but he's never ate one. This is the first time he actually ate. So this is just <laughs> like his wolf side taking over. He's just down. like, you know what? These well, kibbles and bits, these kibbles and bits <laughs> ain't enough. Look, my, my uncle knew what they was doing back in the day. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> But nah, man. Uh, well, yeah. we're glad that you guys are doing doing good. We got a pretty lighthearted, pretty fun docket today. Uh, but we do need to address the one heavy thing in the room, and that's the Highland Park shooting. Oh. Uh, over this yeah. past weekend, uh, there's been a lot of talk around it. Um, as far as I know, there's it's been six cr- oh. victims. What'd you say? No, like not to cut you off, but we were recording our last yes. episode while it happened because I got off, and that's the first thing I saw when I went inside the house and I went on Twitter. Yeah, literally the first thing I saw. So it happened while we were recording, but since we're zooming now, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm usually like on my phone when we're potting regularly. But since I was here, I was like, ah, ah. Uh, yeah, didn't, we didn't get the the breaking news, I guess. Yeah. So thoughts and prayers to all the victims and the families of the victims that uh were dealt with this tragedy. Uh, but my main issue has, well, I got a couple of issues. One of my main issues with this situation is that when it was initially brought up it was addressed as if it was another issue with Chicago violence. And 
I said I, I ignored it because everybody named Mama got something to say about Chicago. So I'm like, yeah. calling out names. Not yet, not <laughs> yet. But I was just like, I was just like, whatever. Then I the main thing of, is because the media, I'm not to cut you off again, but like the media <laughs> promoted it as Highland yeah. Park, Illinois, Chicago. Like yeah. they just blurred it all into one instead of just saying yeah. Highland Park, Illinois. Like with Texas, they didn't do that. They, they did Uvalde, Texas. They didn't do Uvalde, San Antonio, Texas. Or, Houston, nah. Texas, right. or Dallas, Texas. Mm-hmm. They, but with us, for whatever reason, even though Highland Park, it, it's close to Chicago, but like, if you're on the south side of Chicago, to get to Highland Park, it's like an hour and a half drive. Yes. It's 30 for minutes from downtown. Yeah. It's one it's of the with, richest with, neighborhoods in traffic, Illinois. With, with traffic, it becomes like a whole expedition, like a whole, yes. like, I got to plan my day around this. <laughs> yeah. But that's how, like, the media likes to frame it. So everyone thought it was Chicago because that's the first thing I saw on Twitter. Well, what do you expect from Chicago? I was like, first of all, sir, that's where Michael Jordan lives. Like, <laughs> that's first it, and foremost. It, it don't get much richer than Michael Jordan living somewhere. Like, it's, yeah. it was one of those things where everybody wants to be the first one to blame Chicago for something. And, and yeah. obviously, we're aware of the stuff that goes on in Chicago because we're in Chicago. But at the same time, for you to go out of your way to just assume that this is a Chicago-related thing. And then when people were proven wrong, they were like, oh, well, why else would we assume that it was Chicago? Because it happens in Chicago all the time. It would even be different if this dude was from Chicago. He was from the area. This was a native. This was a high yeah. Park native that decided to do to commit this act. I'm like, how are we? How was the conversation not about this either being a terrorist act or it being uh, an issue for gun control? But now, no, this is another uh, staple or another rung in the Chicago violence storytelling thing. That's what that's what bothered me more than anything. Because even when people are proven wrong, they still, well, you know, it just so happened that six other people just so happened to be shot in Chicago that day too. We understand that, but for you to sit there and try to soup this mass shooting into another Chicago exploit or another Chicago problem, that's wrong. And that's lazy. Everybody want to be first, but nobody wants to be right. Because it's so yeah. easy to just go ahead and just be like, oh, where are they shooting at? Oh, it's close to Chicago. Might as well. What's another murder? It's 807. You know, it's, it's like that. It, it's it's messed up because, yeah, it's you're, you're from Chicago when it's positive, but when you're mm-hmm. not, then it's like, no, nah, you can't put that on me. Like, that's not Chicago. Mm-hmm. Like, let's be real. That was a rich crime. So y'all figure that out. I ain't got shit to do with 63rd and them over there. That's y'all issue. Y'all <laughs> deal with that. And Dude, it, it's just think? crazy. I don't know. Wait, well, what do I think? Yeah, what you think overall, just sort of whole? Yeah, the whole, like like I said, they, they try to, the media likes to try to blame uh, Chicago and like uh hood activity like this is a unwarranted he didn't shoot up like people that might have killed his family or killed his cousin or killed his best friend like Mm -hmm. when when that happens in the hood a lot of the retaliation the shootings are retaliation because he killed my family member my best friend my close ones my uh, etc you know right there Mm -hmm. is this random kid who was just bored or whatever the excuse is i guess the excuse is going to be that he was mentally unstable and probably got bullied he was like 13 or whatever and why not? So that's why he had to shoot up that uh, random parade, or oh, which is just fitting for Fourth of July that they shot up. He shot up a, it, it, like people were saying, doesn't get more American than that. And like it's sad yeah. to say, but that's I mean that's bad. it's where it's where <laughs> we're at right now. It, it's yeah. definitely where we at. And one thing, and this is to kind of segue into to our next topic. We've gotten some some complaints as as a group, as a unit, uh, that basically. We're too black. We're 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 too pro black and too. too we not <laughs> <laughs> banks. That's true. Too nah, quick well, to denounce that support. Oh yeah, Negro. <laughs> what? Never. Nah, but all jokes aside, we we, we, we <laughs> my, I threw my koofy away. Okay, February is over, sir. Who was uh, next to them on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm on the far end for a reason. It gets lighter mm-hmm. as you move on. <laughs> But no, uh, one thing that we that we've uh, been hearing, we've been hearing some feedback that we basically speak too much about the mass shootings, and we we are too political when it comes to the mass shootings that go on. We speak too much about gun control, and we don't speak enough about Chicago violence. Okay, and to that I say, what do you want us to do about that? Where we everything that we've done since we began this podcast has been talking about what's going on in the news and giving our opinions on it. Okay, first of all, I don't go looking 
for these mass shooting stories. I don't go looking for murders in Chicago <laughs> stories. So whatever is trending is what I'm going to talk about and what G baby is going to bring up in the document and what zoo is going to bring up that needs to be addressed. This is how the podcast works. We talk about what is trending and what has been trending as of late, unfortunately, are these numerous mass shootings that have been happening in a pretty fast succession. So for people to complain that we're picking, we're nitpicking and picking sides and, and not talking about what's going on in Chicago. Do you, are you saying that we don't care? Cause that's lazy. We've spoken many times about how violent Chicago is and how we wish it was better. So for you to go out of your way and say that we're not doing our part in regards to telling the news or giving our opinions, you're not listening hard enough. We're not going to sit here and get on the podcast every day to talk about another shooting that happened down the street from my house. What was, what would be the reason for that? I mean, cause then, yeah, it's like, okay, we could talk about a murder every hour, every other hour in Chicago. But with those people who are like, oh, what about the black on black violence? What about Chicago? That's not what we're talking about. Do you see what I'm saying? Like when the Uvalde thing happened, y'all want to all the black on black. We understand we need to do better. But this ain't about black on black. This is about gun violence and children. Y'all keep wanting to, oh, like, no, that's just wrong. Black on black violence is just wrong, but it only affects black people. So nobody cares. But you shot up a holiday parade. Like you, you messed up, up the elementary whole. school. Like you, you see what I'm saying? Like at some point, when are we gonna stop being black man, black woman, and just be man and woman? Like everybody knows that's fucked up. You don't mm. do that. But as soon as you all do the gun, do the but y'all don't say that with the blacks. We do, but y'all don't ever listen. But then as soon as we say, oh, take away the guns, y'all shouldn't shouldn't be shooting up kids. All oh, the guns not the problem. Fine, the guns not might be the problem, but the access. To them, the problem is the killing the kids. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. If you ran in there and beat up a bunch of kids, it's still wrong, but it's yeah. not killing kids. Mm -hmm. You can't outlaw hands, but you can outlaw guns. But you won't. You won't do it for kids. You damn sure ain't gonna do it for no black folks. So why are we hood. even talking about black on black violence? Zoo, what you think? Uh, I also agree. No, no don't no. try to be <laughs> <laughs> don't try to be safe now <laughs> no 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 i do agree and then like my main thing is like the whole black on black thing or whatever it's like it's proximity if you look up murders in little village it's latino on a, mexican on mexican if you look up murders in humble park it's puerto rican on puerto rican etc etc i'm sure if you look up the murders in chinatown it's asian on asian or if you go on the, we have a heavy ukrainian population in Chicago as well, I'm sure it's white on white, Ukrainian on Ukrainian crime there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's basically, it's proximity. You know, it's, it's right. not like they're driving all the way to Uptown on the north side or um, in Wicker Park and then shooting each other up over there. It's like, no, we live three blocks from each other. It's like, we're course, keeping it contained. Like, we shoot yeah. our shit up. And it's not like, it, 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 what, what makes it funny is that it's not like they really care. They just say that to shut us up from speaking out and saying, hey, somebody shooting up a hospital probably shouldn't have access to a gun. They probably should go through some type of psychiatric, you know, tell to see if they should even be in ownership of a gun. There's no reason your first thing when you turn 18 should be sliding to the gun store. Like, that's yeah, like, that's, that's a that, rite of passage, though. That's what I'm saying, though. But so it's like everybody in their mama is so defensive of guns and, and so defensive of their Second Amendment rights. And then when somebody said, hey, X, Y, and Z is wrong. Oh, well, you know, this also happened too. Yes, we're, I'm aware of that. I can look at my situation and be like, dang, Chicago got some messed up tendencies due to whatever is going on. Why is it so hard for you to look at the country as a whole and be like, dang, we got some messed up tendencies when it, when it comes to the ease of getting guns and the ease of committing heinous acts against innocent people. Like, I don't understand why it's so hard for people to... Like like Zoo loves to say in the group chat, nuance. Don't act, don't act stupid. You know, you know the conversation that we're having. We're not even yeah. saying that white people are inherently evil or Latinos who shoot up. Wow. These, we're not saying I'm saying that. <laughs> what, what I'm talking about, like we we haven't just gone on here and just flat out been like, oh, down with white people because they always shooting stuff up. That if we was coming out like that, then okay, somebody saying, Oh, well, what about the black on black crime? They would have a case. All we've said was that the access to guns needs to be restricted. 
That is all we have ever said. That's the only thing we we don't agree on a lot. That's the main thing we be agreeing <laughs> upon. And now people yeah. got a problem with us saying that we become too political or yeah. we're we're not we, we're not addressing the big issue. The access to guns <laughs> is a problem regardless. People like love to post a picture. Oh, why do you have a problem with this? It's like three hillbillies with 18 guns, but not this. And it's like five black folks and 16 guns. I have a problem with both. Nobody should be just be able to just get a gun off a of COD and just be walking around with it. I'm uncomfortable with that regardless. It don't matter if you black, white, blue or whatever. Like that's an uncomfortable exactly. thing to be around. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm tweaking, but that's an uncomfortable like environment to just be around. And then yeah. it's still like, they tell us, oh, why don't you talk about black on black crime? Fine, let's talk about it. But now you don't care about it. So you only want to hear us when we're not talking about black on black crime, but then want to tell us to shut up and talk about black on black crime. So it's like, what do you want us to do? Like, what, you just don't want us to talk, is what it seems like. That's really what it is. So yeah, that yeah. Thing is, it's just lazy. <laughs> it, it, it's my, I'm mad because it's lazy. It's one of those things where like, I think we do a pretty good job of researching our stuff. I think we do a pretty good job of making sure we have all the facts. And if we don't, by the time we get to the podcast, we say, hey, this is what we heard as of right now. So yeah. we have plenty of examples of gun violence on bo from both sides of the spectrum. And for somebody to just, just snatch it all and kind of just make it all one big, oh, what about this black on black crime? But they refuse to address proximity. They refuse to re uh, address the fact that rarely other people get involved i mean it happens but rarely is one of them like oh i decided to shoot up a whole school to go find my op no it was a drive-by on the block and people who may I have found him and I shot next him. next to him on the block they may have gotten hit but it wasn't i'm going into a public place and doing this so it's yeah. like every, every like everybody so educated and knows so much until it's time to do their own research and that's what I think bothers me more than anything when people say that we've got that we're too political and we don't address everything fully. Like, come on now, be better. I mean, yeah, because yeah. like I said, they don't they don't care about the black on black violence unless it's something you're defending. Mm -hmm. So it's just like when you dig deep to the history, you're gonna find out how wrong you are because the increase in the large amount of black on black violence is due to white interference. It's due to increase this. It's due to drugs in the community, but y'all don't want to hear that. Y'all just automatically assume that when we 14 years old, we just getting guns, just handed to us. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. no, you come with the cake. You get the cake. It's like your bar mitzvah. You get a cake and you get a Glock. That's, that's what you do. I ain't never had that, but it's like, y'all giving us these opportunities to do ourselves, but we not killing y'all. When was the last time you said yeah. heard some black on white, black on Latina? It's always black on black or white on kids. It's like, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, you all so mad about us killing each other, but y'all not mad about y'all killing our future. Yeah. Like, make me understand. Yeah, like um, when that Buffalo shooting happened, uh, Andrew Schultz had that had a joke where he said uh, when the shooting happened, he was uh, picking up food at this Middle Eastern restaurant and it was on the news. And then once they saw that there was a shooting, but there were no deaths, that him being a white guy looked at the, the Middle Eastern guy serving him the food and they were like, and his joke was like, oh, that wasn't us. We get the job done. <laughs> you know, like, because, so, you know, yeah. white folks yeah. get the job done. Like they, 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 they set out what they're going to do. They, they don't do attempt. It. There ain't no attempted murders. <laughs> so it, it's like one of those things. Like, dog, it's like, it's a whole gun thing. Why, why can't we just do the whole branch? Because if you want to do something about it, that's how you get to it. You have to get to the main law. You can't just be like, oh, how do we stop black on black crime? Well, how, we help stop it by regulating said things. And like we said, it's hard to get guns here. That's the main thing I always see when there's a shooting here. Like, oh, in Illinois has the strictest gun laws. It doesn't work, you see? It's like, no, it doesn't work because we drive half an hour or an hour to Indiana and get all the guns there. Like with the fireworks. Everyone mm -hmm. drives an hour to Indiana to get fireworks. These niggas still fireworks popping fireworks here. outside my house right yes. now. I'm about right to call, I'm, I'm finna call 12 in a minute. God <laughs> dang. I mean, they they the whole week. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Rick on the project. Yes, I'm the one that called. <laughs> <laughs> Stop bothering us, sir. <laughs> and, uh, the Dave Chappelle skit. <laughs> broke in here and hung his pictures. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, uh, all jokes aside, man, stop assuming that we're not doing our part and our due diligence as, as podcasters, as researchers, and do your own. So when you come to us saying that we're not doing our part, you have uh, something that you can properly counter with because that now you just sound uneducated and lazy. And uh, once again, thoughts and prayers to all those who lost their lives during the Highland Park shooting. But on a funnier yes. note, Doja Word. Cat is beefing oh, with, with a 17-year-old Noah Snap or Snap, however you say his name, from uh, Stranger Things fame. Will. Uh, Zoo, would you like to 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 bring to let us let everybody know what happened? Uh so uh Miss Doja Cat, you know, as we all know, Stranger Things came out, uh volume two just released uh yes, we, yes, we yes. might talk about it here on the pod maybe right now maybe we'll do an extra episode on how g baby finished watching it but uh I finished it regardless okay cool uh it came out uh doja had tweeted that the character who plays eddie munson the actual actor is really attractive mm-hmm. so then after that tweet i'm assuming maybe she expected him to see it and message him or someone be like oh doja cat because you know it's doja cat she's really pretty Right. And uh, nothing happened, so she DMs Noah Schnapp, uh, who plays Will in Stranger Things, for those who don't know his actual government name. And Will, being the 17-year-old high schooler, made a TikTok about it, because I'm assuming he thought it was a joke, because that's how, if you follow Doja Cat on social media, her, her thing is basically a meme page. It's literally mm-hmm. a meme page. Mm-hmm. All her socials, Twitter and TikTok and Instagram, she basically just posting herself as me so maybe he thought it was a joke so he, he snapchat he, i mean screenshot it made a tiktok posted it like ha look what doja messaged me this is hilarious blah 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 and then doja cat came out either the next day or the day after which would have been uh yesterday saying that no snap was a snake that she gets that he's uh 17 and like we all do silly things and make mistakes but that, that that was like some something fake to do that you don't do that to a friend you don't leak text messages or dms which How i mean i could kind of see you? she's 26 she's our age yeah hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy hmm, it looks a way <laughs> it does it does it looks a huge way but that was the main gist and i don't know if she expected because she's a superstar that people were going to take her side but this is a 17 year old white boy on the most popular TV show. <laughs> That's oh, yeah, come out like, like, since Game of Thrones. Yeah, absolutely. I, you are a Negro <laughs> to them. <laughs> the only person she'd have won that fight with Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been all types of coon and monkey. And those, oh, and, and, oh. They reshot the show. They reshot the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> if you beefing with Doja Cat, yeah, yeah, that would have been over with. So, what are yeah, y'all's opinions? Yeah, what what is y'all opinions on on the whole thing? I have my jokes per usual, but what, G baby, go go ahead, talk to us, man. I mean, it's just a weird situation. It's like you, like you're Doja Cat. I'm pretty sure you can go talk to Eddie Munson. Pretty sure you can just, but he's not gonna just run off to the hill. Like, why are you reaching out to a minor? I don't care if he's on Stranger Things or not. Like, that's you reached out to him. Mm-hmm. That could have been about anything. Like, why are you even talking to this dude? It's it's weird. It just looks away. But it's Doja Cat, so it's like, uh, it's like, she goofy, so they they don't see nothing uh wrong with it. Yeah, and, and like I, like I said, though. they probably thought it was a joke because it is Doja Cat. But it's like the Zoe Kravitz thing. Like, it was different. <laughs> you said it what? Was different. The Zoe Kravitz thing was different between this and that. Well, it's not much, but Zoe like came out acting as if she was like legit attracted to Jaden Smith when he was like 14. So it was like, all right. Well, she could have played it off as a joke. Yeah. A lot of people try to, you know, I mean, that's a that's a very common thing in in, in households that isn't talked about it much. It's like se- the sexualizing of teenagers by like yeah. elders. It's like that needs well, that as much as it shouldn't happen, it happens a lot. Oh, you're gonna be my boyfriend yeah. when you get older, stuff like that. Like yeah, that if somebody really wants to like look into that, like that's that's a strange thing to say to a 13 yeah. year old <laughs> like, to be fair to be fair um although uh his name is joseph quinn who plays eddie munson 
and Stranger Things, which he was trying to get at. To be mm-hmm. fair, he's 30 years old, I believe, in real life. Mm-hmm. So he's not an actually in high school. So she was trying to get at him, but it is weird messaging. Trying to get at another 30-year-old when you're 26. Through a, se- and from you're a 17. To, through a 17-year-old. That's like <laughs> if I see like a pretty uh, a chick my age. Well, so I, I'm too scared to talk to her. And yeah, her little sister is like buying ice cream. And I go up to her little sister like, hey, put me on with your sister. That, like, you, I'm getting the cops call on me. I'm going You're to going jail. to jail, buddy. <laughs> but, like, what are you doing? I'm going to jail. What are you doing? <laughs> it's basically the equivalent of doing that. Absolutely. Or if someone would have messaged, uh, if um, someone found, um, let's say someone found uh, Nancy or Maya Hawk uh, attractive. Yeah. And I messaged uh, Millie Bobby Brown. Now I look crazy, unless I'm Drake, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> but if I'm anybody else, I knew you was gonna find say. a way to bring that. At a, I was wondering how you was gonna bring that around. That's hilarious. Yeah. I knew you was gonna find a way. That's crazy. Oh uh, no! Nah. But yeah, it, I, I, the whole thing is weird because it's kind of like, even if you, because I personally, I don't think she meant anything by uh, DM and Noah, but it do look weird. But at the same time, to go on live and go out of your way to just start like an active beef with a white with a, with a little white boy over this, when like you said, your Doja Cat, like whether you like her or hate her, she's still one of the most popular singers, rappers, artists right now. That's she's constantly trending, she's constantly being talked about. White all you gotta like do, literally, all you gotta do is get your agents to find his agents. I mean, you got like it's not hard if you're a celebrity to get somebody's number. How many times have you heard about a rookie getting drafted and like the veteran text him as soon as he gets drafted? All right, young blood, let's work. Nigga, how you get my yeah. number? I just I was just drafted two <laughs> minutes ago. Your <laughs> agent hit my hit up my agent. You're like, Doja Cat. <laughs> you can call me. I'm not gonna be like, why the hell is a verified Doja Cat calling me on IG? Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna question that. I'm gonna just no? pick it up. You no? take your chances with that. Yeah. Like Jay-Z, if it's a verified Jay-Z caller, uh, they probably, I'm going to see what's to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's verified <laughs> if it checks the boxes. Unless, you know, what's his name? John, what is it, John Quinn or whatever? Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, Joseph Quinn. Unless right. he's just like, unless he's just like, no, and, the, and she's bothering him at this point. But like, shoot your shot, you're Doja Cat. Like, come on, you're Doja Cat. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that whole thing is weird. Though. It's like, you shot? Like, nigga, what is this? Like, you... Do you like you yes or no? Like, what, like, what, like, your dose of cat, bro. Like, I don't know. Every, every time something new, news wise comes out about her, it's just like, it's all right. Something. It's always something. She, she's like, she, she find a way to get to, to, to be in the news with every Stay other relevant. month or something. Yeah, whatever it takes. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's crazy. Um, it was something else that happened. No, it wasn't those related. But uh, I have a, a current beef with the anime community. Hold on, before oh. you get into that, we do oh, have to touch on that. The Joe Biden, he I guess he signed over the abort, signed uh, or is going to sign something for abortion rights. He going he's supposed to do a lot of things. I don't know how I don't know if I even trust him to remember that it's he's supposed to sign that, bro. I I I <laughs> Y'all seen the video check. of him like reading the directions of on the teleprompter? Well, like, he's, he's, bother video. Watching <laughs> he's lost. Like he it, read the line. <laughs> And then he read the line, read the line, read the line. And then Kamala, she going out of her way to speak in circles. Like we don't have, like, like we can't CC what you're saying now and realize you said the same thing in three different ways. You're not trying to get the last page of your essay field. We're asking you hard hitting questions that we need the answers <laughs> to about the state of our country. And you sitting there just trying to make the word count. Cause she knows we st- that we tired. <laughs> so they tired us being tired. <laughs> so they- Kicking some action. <laughs> How dare you be annoyed with us not doing our job? <laughs> damn. damn, here. I told you that's what it is. That's all America is a damn here. Talk, for those who may have not heard that episode, speak on that that ideology for America. So the idea is that pretty much you're unequal to an American, or a white American, if you've ever been put in a cage. So don't ever try to just Oh, I'm better. We're equal. Y'all never be equal because you've always had to fight for your rights. And whenever you go a little bit and ask for too much, they hit you with the damn here. We asked to abolish slavery. <laughs> they did it. Damn here. Now y'all want to write, want to vote, and y'all want to eat next to us and shit. Like, hold on, y'all asking for a lot. Like, we just 
we just set y'all free. Like, don't push it. Same thing with the women. Oh, y'all want to be treated as equal? Fine. Wait, y'all want to make as much as us? Stay in your place. Like, we told you. Damn, here. We gave you the voting. We damn, here. <laughs> and when we took the abortion, it was like, we planned, we're going to give it back. But you see, like, don't push the boundaries no more. It's like, just stop asking. Just be cool with what we give you. And that is not right for anybody. And whether you be Mexican, a woman, black, gay, or whatever, like, there's certain things as a person you're just not done, like, no, we're not going to argue about this. I need to be free. I need to control my body. You need to treat me as a human being. Them should just be like the three, my friend. Mm-hmm. The Constitution should be three things. <laughs> I, you know what, get me? <laughs> You know, you know what, that they refuse to update that hoe because even as as dirty as of a man as, as Thomas Jefferson is, even he said that this thing needs to be updated like every twenty years. And I like, do to get more updates than the constitution. <laughs> 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 oh, when man. the last time they ratified some or took some out, it, it was some stupid. I think it's just been a, a prohibition. I think that was like the last series. And you see, they was mad about alcohol. (laughs) They won't even get that mad about cigarettes. They won't get mad about cancer, about nothing. They just alcohol. So that shows you what it is. The Roaring Twins had like a million things going on at the time. They had the they 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 had made a bunch of money, then they lost a bunch of money, and then it was like y'all niggas drinking too much. Then they was about to go to war, or they had just left the war. It was just like it was a lot. Yeah. The alcohol thing is because they don't like um Things you can make on your own. Alcohol you can make on your own if you know how to. Mm-hmm. Right, because tobacco. Gonna tax you. Yeah, tobacco can only grow under certain conditions. You're not gonna have a tobacco field right. in your yard. But so then that's I why. meant it like you know, like you you want to get mad about this BS stuff. Yeah, yeah I want to ratify yeah, no, yeah, it. Like, you gotta lock your horse up. Are you getting fifty years in jail? We getting rid of that law, but we keeping anything else. Now you leave your horse unattended without getting locked up, but we not giving women rights. That's a fair trade off, I feel. And that's not right. And that's the country okay. we live in with our Gucci belt and goggles. Heck <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh man, that's crazy. Uh, but going to uh, your rant. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah, your anime rant. Oh yeah. man. So I've talked about this before, and I'm a fan. I've always been a, a pretty good fan of anime. I was never one of the ones. I never dug too deep into it because I didn't know much about it until I got older. So my main ones was like, oh, I knew about Naruto. I knew about Dragon Ball Z. I would watch. I don't know if these count, like Digimon, Pokemon, all of those. I don't know if those are considered anime or not, whatever. They're technically I enjoy anime. It. Yeah, so Digimon, I, is, I think, is considered more anime. Pokemon. It's Americanized. Okay. I watch both of them. So, yeah, that's kind of high. But one thing... That I've gotten tired of seeing it, and I we we've talked about this before, but the whole there was a video that that Zoo showed me because he thought it was gonna rile me up. It did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where there it was an anime con, and they were asking what like basically what uh are your unpopular opinions about anime? And the first dude that went up, African American guy, uh was like, uh, I hate the fact that anime has become mainstream. And so I'm hearing him, I'm no, I'm, all right, I'm gonna hear what he gotta say. So I watch it, and he's talking about basically what everybody else has talked about. Oh, they weren't here for the struggle. I remember I used to be bullied for this. I remember I used to get made fun of for watching anime and all of this. And now you got the nerve to like it. You got the nerve to to, to come to these cons and dress up and, and make money off of it. No, you don't get to uh to play with us. I know this is gatekeeping, but I don't care because you weren't here for the struggle. First of all, the only struggle that anime fans endured was self-inflicted. Let's be real, okay? <laughs> no, Nobody was mad at you for watching anime. Folks were making fun of you because, like we said before, during gym, you thought you was Naruto and had to run with your arms behind your back. Or you would get upset and start thinking you was going to turn Super Saiyan 3 and just, <laughs> just yelling. Like, this doing is all, all the hand signs. Doing all the see. hand signs. Like, all right, you about to get popped. This game banging now. Like, this ain't got nothing to do with the fact that you enjoy anime. And that's what bothers me is this whole victim mentality. No, yeah. all of your wounds were self-inflicted because you wouldn't just stop, calm down, and just be a fan. You wouldn't just be a fan. Go ahead, yeah. it's you, baby. I, I know you got Go some. Go ahead, you got it. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, it, yeah. it goes through the, like, um, 
I mean, the whole gatekeeping thing, like with an artist. Uh, like obviously, if like my homie, like Rico's my homie, I want him to make. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, never mind. Uh, my thing like froze for a second. Uh, yeah, so like, like Rico's my homie, so I want him to make. It. I want him to become mainstream in like whatever he decides to do, music or acting or whatever. But if it's like someone from like two towns over that I know about and I know his music's fire, people want to gatekeep because I could play his music around my friends. Or I could go on a date with a chick, and now she's like, oh, dang, who's this artist? You really know, like, good music. You have a great music taste. That, like, people mm-hmm. I don't even know about. Your friends are asking the same thing. Everyone's just damning it. Everyone's like, damn, this guy's like a music savant. But now that person you listen to blows up. Mm-hmm. So now everyone, now you, you don't have that thing that made you feel, quote, unquote, special that you knew about before everybody else did. And now everyone knows about him. And now it's like, damn, like, the one thing that I thought made me stand out from the rest, now it doesn't. Like, I had talked about, I went to Kendrick Lamar's concert uh, when he was at Congress Theater. Tickets were 20 bucks, general admission. <laughs> it, it was, it was when, when his biggest song was uh, Michael Jordan. Oh, wow. That, that's when I went, before Good Kid, Mad City, all that. So I was like, damn. And then he blew up with the next album, Good Kid, Mad City. Now it's not like, damn, now nah, I was just in them before you. I don't go around telling people that, except right here in this instance. Like, Rico, this is the first time Rico's finding out about it. <laughs> yeah, I honestly did not know <laughs> and that. It's That's like, crazy. Because it's, you, you look, because if it's your favorite artist, you want them to make it. Same thing applies with anime. If you want more episodes, if you want more seasons, you want it to become a mainstream, like, like me and G-Baby had talked about, they're milking this Attack on Titan thing. Why? Because it's the most popular anime out right now so they're milking right. it and trying to like all right now this is the final season part five and it's like bro it just ended already like like the, man, the the manga ended you're extending these episodes way too long dragging it out doing the extended cuts and why not why so you can make more money and it's like obviously i want more episodes because but it's mainstream now so now it's kind of getting ruined. It's kind of getting watered down. It's one of those things. Gatekeeping is just because nobody wants to give anybody any credit for nothing. Because if you, like you said, if you plan a song for a chick and y'all go to a party together, they hand her the art and she plays this song and then they be, oh, what you know about that? And she, oh, y'all don't know about this. That shit hurts to the core because you didn't know about that. <laughs> And I told you, but if she'd be like, oh, yeah, well, my homie put me on, you feel a little bit better. Because it's like, okay, I, I taught somebody something. You know what I'm saying? Like, I showed them something they didn't know. But for people to be like, yo, I want credit for uh, all the abuse I took for like an anime. Like, if you want us to congratulate every single one of y'all because you wore a headband to school and somebody pushed you? Nigga, fuck you. Like, no, we don't need you. It's mainstream now. It's major. We don't need you no more. See, now you want to gatekeep. Now we don't need you. Now, instead of, oh, you know, me going to you for the knowledge and, yo, put me on, put me on. It's like, fuck you, dude. What? You going to tell me you the person that put everybody on Dragon Ball Z? Everybody in Chicago started watching Naruto because of you? Think of that, man. How dare you gatekeep something? How dare you tell somebody, oh, I ain't never heard this before. Have you heard everything anybody's ever heard all day? No, yeah. so shut up. So shut up. That's my thing. It's like, what, what are you holding credit for? Facts. And they don't realize how much, like you, like Zoo said, how much that can hurt both the artist or the restaurant or whoever, the, the entertainment thing. You wonder, wait, why can't I never have nobody? Or why is my favorite restaurant closing? Because every time <laughs> you take in a picture of your food and somebody say, what that say? Nah, chill. Nah, you doing I'm too trying much. to keep well, it okay. Mama Jones need this. You had the yeah. What are you she, doing, bro? She needs the plug so she can stay open. She got five kids uh, she got to put through school. And you got the nerve to tell to, to say, nah, chill. Nah, nah, you're doing too much. Excuse me? Yeah. So as you guys know, you know I listened to the that? Rory Mall pod. Yeah. And a couple weeks ago, they were in Mexico. But they wouldn't say, like, on the episode, they're like, yeah, we're in Mexico. We're not going to say where, blah, 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 blah. Bro, they were in Mexico City, bro. They're a gatekeeping Mexico City. They act like the, the most popular <laughs> city in Mexico was like some <laughs> best kept secret. Yeah, because they just mentioned so it cool. on this most recent. And this was like two weeks ago. They're like, yeah, I could understand if they were somewhere more in Mexico where quote unquote dangerous. 
and you maybe thought someone was going to try to rob you or something, like, because they, they're a pretty big podcast, and so maybe they had fans in Mexico and they didn't want them to approach. But you're in Mexico City, dog. It's like, what are you gatekeeping there? I could Google top 20 things to do in Mexico City and get, like, these <laughs> low-key spots that everybody knows about. Like, it's like, when, you can't when gatekeep I went, something you invented. Yeah. That's the only, like, if you invented it, then, yeah, you can gatekeep when I... You're you gatekeeping a city, a vacation yeah, no. city. Because <laughs> like when I went, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, Zoo. You oh, can't yeah. gatekeep something that has its own destination. You can fly to Mexico City. Yeah. You can go. I you thought... can look up Delta United, all of that, and Mexico City can be a destination. How dare you try to 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 de- to, to to gatekeep <laughs> a, a destination trip? Are you serious? Thanks. Because I originally thought they were somewhere like more secluded, like away from Tulum, away from Acapulco, away from like like maybe a, like a smaller beach, and that's what I believed at first. But then when I found that, I was like, bro, like when I went there, I got a message. Um, I went to this restaurant that was like inside a cave. A couple of people messaged me asking me, "Yo, where's that?" All I did was screenshot the location with the name of the restaurant, and I sent it to them because it's like. I want people to go there because next time I go back, I want that place, that establishment to still be open. Am I, I gonna like see to these re-go. people? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are we I talking about, bro? It's like a, it's different if you like just say we're in Mexico City and then we gotta catch like an underground train to Zoo's Ranch or something. And we're at <laughs> Zoo's Ranch, but not everybody know where the damn underground train is at. You yeah. can, all right, bro. This is my little kicking spot. I ain't finna let nobody know, but you finna, oh yeah, y'all can't come to the Kennedy Airport. This my like, what the hell are you talking about? I, I can't go here. Who, who says I can't go here? <laughs> like, how you gonna gatekeep? Nah, move around. Now, nah, if I find out what it is and see you, I'm gonna have to punch you. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> like, if you take a picture of this skillet, oh, where that's from, move around. Now, if I move around and find you eating that skillet, <laughs> you're, like, you're gonna be wearing like, that oh. skillet. <laughs> because now you're doing it too much. Right, like, bro, it's a skillet. You act like you made it. You, yeah, we watch somebody else make it, and then you get mad when, oh, we had to up the prices to twenty dollars. Damn, y'all changed. Well, y'all gatekeep. So if we only gonna keep ten customers, y'all gonna pay twenty five dollars a burger, and that's what y'all gonna have to do. But nobody wants to pay twenty five dollars. Restaurants, artists, whoever, whoever, always say, "Tell your friends." That's like somebody gate. That's like us finding out when our homies is gatekeeping our podcast. (laughs) <laughs> like like yeah. like I would be ready to fight because it's like we 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 work hard. We we like I said, we do research, we try to we stand up at the wee hours at night, sometimes the wee hours in the morning to try to get content out to people. And we find yeah. out one of our main supporters. If I find out my wife was gatekeeping the podcast, that's 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 grounds for a divorce. Cause what is he doing? Why do you not want me to succeed? <laughs> like, do you not want us to get 18 viewers? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Uh, Shout out, if you were <laughs> number 17, I got us a new viewer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what, like, what are you doing, bro? The whole gatekeeping phenomenon is so backwards to me because <laughs> you do nothing but harm the person you quote unquote love. You're not helping nobody because it's like, unless there's some billionaire that's just funding this because this is a passion project, money right. needs yeah. to be made to keep this place open, to keep this artist from making art, to keep this company from pushing out content. <laughs> And you, oh, that's like somebody trying to, like, imagine when RDC first, like, popped into the scene. And, like, everybody that started watching their videos was like, nah, y'all, y'all, you ain't gonna know what's so funny to me. It's like, don't share, don't share. You don't, you the only nigga with an inside joke. It's not an inside <laughs> joke, if only you know about it. <laughs> like, you're, you're just weird, though. That's a thought, nigga. Get out of here. Yeah. I'm 36. What do you mean you're 36? Why, why do you Are keep you? saying that? <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, it's like, <laughs> The YouTubers, for a reason, tell you like and subscribe and share. I'm going to start putting that at the end of us. And then now the YouTuber or the content creator that you love watching stops making videos. And like two years from now, you're like, damn, I wonder why they stopped making videos all of a sudden. And then maybe you run into them, ask them, why'd you stop making? Well, no one was liking, no one was sharing my shit. Were you sharing? No, I wasn't. Now it's like, well, that's why. Because I didn't grow. I didn't get bigger because no one was sharing me. So I got discouraged all because you wanted to be selfish. Yeah. Right. Like for, selfish for what? For you shame. ain't helping the lady and you're not getting paid off of me. Why are you hiding? Why who gives you the right to hold my art hostage? 
That's crazy. Mm-mm. That's that's insane. But speaking of somebody who cannot be held hostage, Northwest is her daddy's <laughs> daughter. <laughs> She, no, me. She, <laughs> Zoom, 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 I'm gonna let you have this one. This is all you, big dog. Go ahead. Uh, well, uh, Miss uh, Northwest, uh, she is Kanye's daughter, as we all know, Kim Kardashian uh, is, all, is their mother. Uh, but she is um, starting to get older. I don't know how old she is. She's, I think she's like nine, around there, eight or nine. And um, she's been making the rounds recently on social medias um, because one, She's starting to dress like her dad, wearing the same exact outfits. Uh, according <laughs> to Kim, she, she picks him out. Like, Kim doesn't pick him out. North picks him out, which is, like, I guess yeah, what dope. I don't know. She was, she was, she was, I, I have no idea. <laughs> like, you, don't take, you don't clean up. You don't feed the kids. <laughs> Kanye said the same thing. He's like, when they come over here, ain't no, no, no housewives taking care of my kids. We eating ramen noodles on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Got to remember where you come from. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, she went viral mainly because at first they recorded her leaving, I think, a restaurant or some store. Um, and she yelled at the paparazzi, why are you guys always following us and, like, taking pictures of us and basically stalking our lives? And the paparazzi, you know, a bunch of grown men in their 40s and 50s were like, because we love you and we love watching you and stalking your family. That was the first offense that went viral. And then the second one at the most recent fashion show, don't ask me which one, don't ask me what city, but it was at a fashion show. <laughs> you should know. Should grab- you should they know. keep, they keep <laughs> in the city. Ain't that crazy? That is insane. <laughs> Shaking my head. <laughs> uh, on the back of her fashion show, like pamphlet or whatever they hand out there, she grabbed a uh, pen and wrote, stop, because people kept taking pictures of her. So she was holding up the sign throughout the fashion show, covering her face with a big sign that said stop and everyone was like all right this is this is Kanye's daughter's personality she's not afraid to speak up even if it's not the popular opinion she doesn't care if she offends the paparazzi she's gonna say what's on her mind and not be quiet I think a month ago Saint went viral for the same thing she called uh, everyone uh, on Kim's IG live she called them weirdos for following around her mom <laughs> She's oh like, yeah, so many people. He's like, you guys are weirdos, <laughs> and it's like, all right, Kim. I mean, it's always that thing. My mom says, like, make sure you love the person you have kids with, because if you hate them, the kids are gonna turn out to be just like them. That's what my mom's always told me, <laughs> and, so, and oh, I've so seen so it so happen because I know chicks with with kids, and they're like, yeah, like obviously I love my kid, but they're just like their dad, and I hate their dad. They either just look just like them or they act just like them. Yeah, and true. this is like one of the things with Kim, all her kids, at least the two oldest ones right now that we've seen in the public eye, are basically her, their dad in mini me form. And kids already don't have a filter as it is. And so you mix yeah. that with, and this isn't obviously a knock at Kanye, but they watch what their dad do, do when in regards to the media. So they're like, shoot, daddy don't like him. I don't like him either. And then it's like, like you said, he, they eight, nine years old at the most always got something flashing in their face. Like, bro, I'm just trying to go to McDonald's. It's like, y'all doing a lot right now. Like, <laughs> I like would... these Kanye West kids. What you going to say to them? Nothing. About anything. They got, they worth more than you already. They worth more than anything you've ever done than you already. You can't tell them what, oh, that's not how children are supposed to behave. Nigga, they can buy you. Like, leave them alone. Yeah. That's Paparazzi crazy. is such a dangerous thing because it's like, I don't mean, I'm not in that that, that point yet. We're, we're not yet. I don't know if I would be, I'm sure I would be bothered by that because I don't even like going out the house as it is. And it's like, you, you've you seen the paparazzi like push people to crazy stuff. Like the, Princess Diana was running from the paparazzi when she got into an accident. Then you see people like snap and start whooping on the paparazzi like Kanye did and Skinny Jane. And yeah, everything that happened with Britney Spears, it's like, and it's nothing you can do because it's kind of like, I mean, except for the kids, obviously, a lot of times for the adults is what you signed up for. You take the good and the bad. But it's just like, because kids don't have a filter, it's you. It's easier to put a magnifying glass on just kind of how, like, insane the, the thought of paparazzi right. is. These are grown adults go, that, that get an alert that a child will be in a certain place at a certain time. And they sit there and fight each other to get the best picture to go sell to some tabloid. 
popping out of bushes and shit. Like that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, it's wild. Like you don't got no job. At, three o'clock in the morning, you across the street from Kanye West's house as he's taking out the garbage. Yeah. Good, good morning, Kanye. What nigga? That's where crazy. Is, where is your family? Right. First of all, <laughs> like. <laughs> I don't know. That whole thing is that thing is. And I'm surprised most TMZ people don't get like into fights. They like the whatever reason celebrities always seem to be like they be annoyed, but they'll answer everything TMZ has. But like I would assume that more people would like be ready to square up with TMZ because it's like, right. dog, I'm on a I'm on a date with my wife. If it's our anniversary, and you out here asking me about the Will Smith slap. I don't care about that. Like oh, yeah. <laughs> nothing you got going on right now. The whole thing is it, it, is insane. Uh, yeah, paparazzi is wild. I just saw one with Karuchi uh, today. Uh, mm-hmm. She's like, she's outside. She's she's just paying her the the meter for her. She didn't get a parking ticket, and like the dude's like asking her all these questions. And she's like, bro, I'm just like literally trying to pay this meter and trying to go back inside this restaurant. <laughs> like I got time to be <laughs> like, bro, and 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 he followed her all the way to the restaurant, which is like a block away, and all. Like, See, that's he's not crazy. saying anything. Why are you just why, like after the second or third question that they don't answer? It's like, why are you still following me a block down or like, two blocks down, however far? Because some people be like, fuck it, might as well go all the way. And if you put your <laughs> hands on them, then you get sued because they're whatever that they're, I think, freedom of press or however they want to word it, they're allowed to do that essentially. Yeah. Something else that probably should be amended in the Constitution. Uh, <laughs> Don't you anymore. worried about the length of your grass for a black man? <laughs> <laughs> I, that's what my dad like really got on me about freaking cutting grass. He got a fine one day for like how his, you grass, see? Is, <laughs> his grass is too long. And he was like, all right, it's time to go outside and get y'all cutting the grass. I'm like, this is nuts. He was like, yeah, I'm like, tri- like, dad, who tripping you, over grass? Yeah, you work entirely too hard for them to be tripping over your grass. That's what I'm thinking to myself as I'm out there mowing the grass. Uh, but <laughs> Before we get out of here, because I know G Baby uh shift about oh, no, I'm still decent. Okay, oh. cool, cool, cool. We still got to do the question of the day or go ahead, Zoo. Let's get it. Oh, do right Uh no, the question of the day. Um, I guess I have two of them. We can start with the easier one. Um, it was li- rap lyrics or rap bars. You're tired of hearing. And uh, so I'll give one for example, I'll give mine. Mm-hmm. Mine is the uh, sense and sense. Like if it don't make dollar, it don't make sense. Okay. Or I get or I make sense. It's like I've heard at least sixty rappers, or maybe no, every yeah. rapper I've ever listened to, try to use that bar. I've used that bar when when I thought I could rap, and I was like in the seventh grade. So you tell uh, me you you tell me I got to de- I got to delete that from my phone. <laughs> I gotta delete that yeah, line you got to sense and sense. <laughs> God dang it! You got to delete it. Got to destroy um, the whole. I EP. think the most. The, the tweet I saw, their example, was the Steph Curry. I shoot like Steph Curry, and it's like shooting with the gun. And I got the 30. I've seen some very creative flips with that, especially with battle rap. But it's like they be having to, like, to really work for it because everybody has used it. So yeah. that one still got a little bit of smoke left. I think mine that I'm ready for them to get rid of, unless, like I said, they can find some creative ways to flip, is the whole ice on my neck, ice on my rig, some related to frostbite or too cold. Like, all right, we got to come up with something else. We got to (laughs) come up with something else, y'all. Like, I get it. You got a lot of money. Those are a lot of chains (laughs) on your neck. There's got to be another metaphor or connection you can come up with with that. I don't like the stack into the ceiling, my money's tall as Shaq type stuff. Because it's like a bunch of one stack up. But it's going to, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be kind of basketball player. Yeah, random seven foot tall basketball player. Like, all right, I'm stacking up like Chet Mc, whatever the hell his name is. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else you're, you're tired of? Because I know you you listen to y'all have listened to a lot of rap, a lot more. It's probably um, still a lot more than I have. I don't know if uh, G Baby might be tired of it, but I recently listened to a new song and it's like brand new. I, I listened to it like a week or two ago, but I forgot to say that. I forgot to name the song. But they use the uh, cash was everything about me, cream, the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not good. I feel good. like everybody's said that. You know, when we were growing up, Akon had the song. I'm going to tell you what Wu told me, cash was everything around me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously Wu-Tang had it. And like, yeah. I feel like a bunch of people have used the, the cream. Like, all right, we get it, cream. Like, you got to flip it. Yeah. Like, just flip it somewhere. 
Uh, I, I'm also trying to like uh, something related to stacking chips. Like it, unless they like come up with a, a, a very clever way to <laughs> say it. Cause I've heard like basically a bit, a, a bunch of different ones like guac, I'm stacking chips or I'm stacking chips like a casino. It's like, okay, yeah. how else can you stack chips? Is there something else that you haven't potentially thought of? I'm pretty sure Pringles has been used before. It's like, okay, I don't know how many more different ways you can stack your chips, Playboy. <laughs> I'm tired of I'm tired of the rims. Uh, I'm tired of the jewelry. Like we get it. Your shit is probably fake just like his, but whatever. I'm tired of all that shit. Like, okay, we see you wearing your whole album on your neck, but what else? Like, what else you got? <laughs> I like the Eminem did a clever one where he said I could put my album around the uh, around the chain and wear it as a neck medallion. That one was dope. Yes. Because you know, because his yeah, album went cool. diamond. Diamond, yeah, that yeah. Okay. Fine. That was that was like I ain't gonna lie, that was decent. And even that he, he but that's Eminem. Yeah, it's one of those like, okay, because he's never says he's probably never used that before. So it's like, okay, all right, all right. But uh that's a good question. Cause I know movie. I know I'm gonna come up with like another one like later on that's gonna bother me. And it's gonna be like, all right, do I gotta add another one to the list? Uh, <laughs> that song gonna come on on shuffle. Oh, I hate that. Uh, never, never again. Yeah. Uh, but well, I got my second, second question? question. Um, yeah. So the, this one is uh, once again uh, the era of corniness is amongst us, and the men are being attacked. Okay. All right. Um. So is it corny? As we all know, um, Giveon dropped an album a couple weeks ago, and Mr. Brent. I think, I think I know where we're going with this because I was yeah. going to ask this too. Go ahead. Okay, Brent also just dropped his album, amazing albums. Both of them, I enjoy them thoroughly. Mm-hmm. But is it corny to be like, yo, finally the Toxic Kings were up, or time to get my toxicity, toxicity on? Because I saw a lot of people posting that all over yeah, social. So now, one, it is a two-part question. One, is it corny to be like, like shouting out the toxicity? Because, you know, we do that with Future as well. Mm-hmm. And then two... I saw women saying that if you listen to Brent Fias and listen to um, uh, Giveon, yeah. you're a little on the, you know, on the little Sus- sussy side. See, which heard, I don't get. No, no, they I don't agree music, with that. They make music for men who are yeah. in breakups with women, because all their songs are about cheating on women. Why are the women excited to listen to said song? I'm gonna be I, real. I don't get that personally. I'm gonna be real with you. Women don't know how to insult men anymore because. Men have started, for better or worse, depending on who you ask, have started like accepting certain things that they're they they are okay with wearing their shorts a little bit higher. Some of them are okay mm. with wearing uh fingernail polish and stuff like that. Whether you agree with uh, it or not, me. a lot of men, <laughs> a lot of men are, <laughs> are, are are opening up and feeling a little bit more open with stuff. So women, they running out of stuff to say. So it's just automatically, oh, he must be gay, or you must be this, or you must be that. And it's like that's lazy. Like get back in the lab. <laughs> Small right up, he's gay. Yeah, it's like it's That's like get, get back in. Hold on, I think you, you hear me. Hold on, it cut out. Oh, you you cut out hear. a little bit. I cut oh, out. There you go. All right, cool. I was saying it's one of those like get back in the lab and, and, and get back to working on your insults because that those they're getting played out. So now every single time we enjoy something or we like something, oh he must be this or he must be that. No. We could just like him because he likes he makes good music. But to answer your right. first question, is it is it getting it's getting corny to a certain extent where it's like because now you can't tell who's joking when they say that because some of them really be trying to live by that. And it's like, bro, yeah. you don't you don't have Brent Fayez money or talent. You don't have Giving On money or talent. You don't get the right to just to, or women. <laughs> you can't just you can't like live by this. You, you, you need can't get this you, off. You, you need to go ahead and open the door for that woman. You, <laughs> you need to bring some flowers to that date. <laughs> like I told y'all a couple of them, everybody wants to get hurt and cheated on so they can run and cry and get that one person that's going to love them forever so that they can cheat on that person. Ah, I'm toxic. Ah, this, that, and the other. So you just, <laughs> you just want to go out here and break somebody's heart. You want to get your heart broke because you can go out there and break somebody else's heart. Man, we got to start that's that corny. cycle. That's gotta, it's all about the cycle of love, my boy. <laughs> Man, I'm so confused. I'm like, wait, what? What do you mean uh, I'm supposed to apply pressure but fall back two inches? Like, what are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? Here? <laughs> what so then you too thirsty. Yeah, what they say <laughs> on uh, what they say on haunted house. He's like, bro, back up off of it, but stay up in them. Like, <laughs> <laughs> 
just be like, I don't want you to get interested, but here's all these pictures. <laughs> what are you talking about? Be, but yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think I don't know what's going on with just young people anyway. I'll throw myself in it. Like, I don't know why everybody's just so such in a rush to just be hurt and cry and go on Twitter and all this stuff. Like, yeah, just cry by yourself. Yeah. What gets me is that people are so like. And I'm, I make this joke a lot, like who hurt you or you need you've been hurt before because everybody love to go on Twitter for the sake of having that viral tweet about love being fake or how niggas be so quick to stab you in the back and cut you. It's like you just can't go your whole life just expecting niggas to hurt you. Like, that's not a healthy way to go. Yeah. Like it ha- Does it happen? Yes. Should it happen? No, but it does. But you learn and you grow from it. Half the time, these niggas ain't never even really been hurt before. They just wasn't picked in the heads up seven up, and now all of a sudden, love is fake. Or, or <laughs> like, it's like, bro, like, chill. Yeah. This man called. If down. nobody loves you okay. anywhere you go, you don't deserve to be loved. That's the truth. There's no way you can't <laughs> find somebody that don't love you at all. You just not yeah, looking. If you just enough. constantly, if, if it smells like cabbage every day you go, then damn it, it's you. <laughs> yeah, it's like bro like you can't there's there's so many people out here and i'm i refuse to believe that out of 10 women that you're talking to all 10 of them just hate your guts entirely like there wasn't one okay conversation in that yeah you, you see what i'm saying it's like at some point you got to turn that in and be like wait a minute maybe, maybe i shouldn't have minute. been barking at her and grabbing <laughs> on her yeah you know yeah, it's Maybe one of those things. And yeah, I also saw it, um, like, I see it a lot on TikTok as well. Like, you'll see a, um, a video of a couple, and the comments are filtered with, oh, I want this. How can I achieve this relationship? You guys are so cute. Uh, that's what I need in my life. And then I'll go to the next TikTok, and it's, uh, um, I saw one day, it was, like, one of those little prankster videos type thing, interviews. Um, it's a chick who goes up to guys who are clearly with their girlfriend. And they asked the dude for the number. They're like, hey, can I get your number? And I saw one today. And um, the the chick goes up to them. And she's like, hey, can I get your number? And he's like, uh, no, I'm with my girlfriend. Sorry. And the comments were littered attacking the dude for saying sorry. For being like, oh, no, I'm with my girlfriend. Sorry. Like, it's one of those things, right? Like, that's how I talk. That's how I talk. So I was like, what? And people were like, oh, that's a red flag that's this that's that like if she, he's apologizing um to her right there only because you're there if you weren't there he would have definitely gave her a number blah 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 this and that and it's like they were clearly minding their own business enjoying their day it looked like la <laughs> it was a beautiful day and why would he ruin it by going off on the chick for just being like hey can i get your number when you know what you, do you is- needed was the subtle decline like no okay we all move on with our day oh it was just a prank Oh, thank you. Can I use it for TikTok? No, you, the comment section wanted him to cuss her out in front of people. And now day is ruined because then the chick would have probably got offended. Now the girlfriend's offended. Now a whole beautiful day is ruined just because people are insecure and don't want people being cordial to each other in public. What you do is just walk smooth off and let your girl deal with that. If you, if you, if it's going to be an issue, you deal with her. If, if you want to give her my number, you give it to her. You say any word to her, because any breath I take is going to, oh, you only put on that bravado and cuss her out because I'm here. You probably found her IG from somebody else and followed her, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to walk smooth while I'm going to give me a snow cone. You handle this shit. <laughs> I'll be back. If she got my number, we know where it came from. That's yeah. that. that like, you, but- can't play, nobody, you can't say nothing to nobody no more. This is true. And then also another thing that is, and we, we've talked about it before, is that like everybody wants, and even Zoo, what you just said, like everybody wants a problem to happen. Like nobody's just okay with happiness. Nobody's just okay with positivity. <laughs> like it's just like, if it's not feeding off a of drama, like it's, it's, it's corny. It's not even, even with the whole thing with, um, with Russell Wilson. And it would be different, like, because Russell Wilson may do some stuff that people may think is corny and may think is like, all right, why are you doing that? But a lot of the times, he'll just make a post, be like, happy anniversary, babe. I love you, this, that, and the third. Yeah. Can't wait till we have another kid or something like that. <laughs> and everybody named Mama got a, got a quote tweeted and say, this is the corniest thing in the world, this, that. Yeah. All he said was he loved his wife. Ain't that what y'all want? Like, what, like, what are y'all? 
Y'all mad because you don't have to tell y'all nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he don't. Know. That ain't no. I gotta commend him for that because all that BS that he be getting, he don't ever answer it. When when Channing went viral for, for for basically saying you don't go from future to Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson ain't say nothing. He was like, yeah, hey, nothing. It don't. It's not his business. You got a problem with her being with me? That ain't got nothing to do with me. Yeah. And everybody just gotta have a think piece on this man doing nothing but taking care of his wife and his kids. Yeah. Like, it's the weirdest thing in the world that, like, this is what y'all choose yeah. to focus on. And then not speaking on, not speaking on their relationship, like, this just uh, relationships in general, a lot of times the dude posts their girlfriend or their significant other because she wants to be showed off. She wants to be appreciated in front of the world amongst mm-hmm. your friends, amongst us, uh, like, strangers. They, they like that thing. They like when you bring flowers to them and whatnot. So they want to get posted. But now I'm getting called corny. So now one of two, I could choose to ignore it. But now if I ignore it, like not speaking on their relationship, like this totally, like, let's say in one of my relationships, I choose to ignore it. Now I'm weak or I'm soft for not fighting people online. And then two, if I fight people online and go at it with them, now I'm corny for fighting on the internet. And three, and and like, or, or now I'm too aggressive and too overprotective. And now I'm toxic. And it's like, like it's a, you that's said, a red no, flag, sis. That's a red flag. Literally, can't do anything <laughs> and please anybody anymore. So, like, best advice is just do you do what works best with you and your partner. If she likes you showing her off and she doesn't mind, and you don't mind getting called names on the internet, do that. If you if you guys do have a problem with people calling you guys names, then don't post each other on social media. It's pretty. Social media is didn't exist fifteen years ago. That's it. Everybody sees somebody happy. Oh, he texted me six years ago. I'm going to just go ahead and ruin this happy marriage. It's like, why? Just because you mad and you bitter? You couldn't get over it? You got to ruin me? Then you won't even take me back. So it's like, (laughs) what are you doing? Like, what what are you talking about? (laughs) Like, you accomplished nothing. (laughs) You ruined somebody's life. Two people's lives. That's crazy. So much jealousy. Me alone. I'm happy. (laughs) And I just promise you, I'm gonna be on an island with no social media when I finally settle down. Yeah, that's that's one of the things. It's like I I knew uh, early on, like especially once I decided I wanted to like really dive into this creative stuff. I was like, and my first of all, my lady don't like being on social media that much anyway, so it kind of worked out. But I was like, I'm no, not I'm going sure. to I'm not going to go out of my way to put her out there. For people to feel like they got to say something or for people to because it's like i'm not going to deal with negativity and disrespect too much now i'm going i'm i'm having an out-of-body experience wilding out and getting your ip address off the dark web because you and that's going to say that hey, now all of a sudden, now i'm immediately <laughs> the bad guy because i'm now i'm doing too much now i'm talking exactly. now it's a red flag so it's like why would i even put myself in that situation to feed into that negativity and to feed into all of that you know, just pessimism. No, every like you like Zeus said, everybody's situation is specific to their situation. If you were somebody who loves to be shown off, fine. If you were somebody who knows that you love them and don't need 85 other people on social media to know, more power to you. It's all gonna be specific to your your situation. Uh and it's just so funny that everybody is either a love guru, everybody just feeds off negativity, everybody need somebody else's negativity with like displayed through their artwork to justify how they gonna act. It's like nobody wants to think for themselves. And it's the funniest thing in the world. But That's how social media. Of, it is, but it's obviously not staying on social media because recently the Ohio House Republicans, they are currently uh, advancing a bill to teach both sides of the Holocaust. Mm. What's the other side of the Holocaust? I, I don't know. I, the still, Jew side? They, they're teaching. Like, I would love to see the pros of it. I would love to hear how they explain what's that, the pros. What's that name of the book? Um, Mein Kampf or something oh. like that? Yeah, that's, yeah, uh, they that's, that's, the book. that's Adolf Hitler's book. Yeah, yeah the, the Manifest. They're going to make them read that. Instead of Romeo and Juliet, <laughs> you guys go. And now I can radicalize. <laughs> Yeah, but now it's, Ro- Romeo and Juliet doesn't like actually make you uh, die with your partner. At least nine times out of ten, it doesn't. 
true. Right. But now this one, now we're going to – you see what's going on with the whole the Buffalo shooting with a dude targeting black, black people because of the whole white people, I guess, are becoming a minority or whatever. So now – you're going to make them read this book. I, I obviously, I don't know if they're going to make them read this book, but in the hypothetical situation, this is the way we're going. Now you're going to make them read this book. Now you have 30 kids finish. in the classroom. You have like 10, 10 classes a day. That's 300 kids or whatever. My math is wrong, my bad. But now there's 300 kids. At least 10 of them are going to be radicalized. But this, but that's see, the goal, most type of like. And that's just 1%. Like, I feel like the kids that go do that have already read this book. Like, I don't think you just, like, it's not the hardest thing in the world to get a copy of. But, you know, yeah, I feel but, like if you're that strong against it, like, they're telling you both sides about what's going to happen and how you go about doing it. I mean, if but you not get always. together. Yeah, that's true. Because, like, obviously there's things, oh, my bad, but, like, sometimes you could be, not know about a subject, then you hear about it, like, oh, that's interesting. And now you're reading on it. Now you're like, damn, this is the way I thought. And, and yeah, especially, true. I don't know what grades these are. If you're teaching kids in seventh, sixth grade, even if you're teaching 17, 18 year olds, they could still be radicalized. Yeah, they could still be radicalized. And especially now with kids getting access to guns, you're looking at 12, 13. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's like, one of those things. It's cr- because I, I made a video about this. It's like they say that the the winner writes history. Like America won the war. Like, so why do we the allies? The allies, how do you want to? <laughs> yeah, the allies. I'm sorry. They won the war. And even Germany, through all it is, Germany still goes out their way to teach their people about the evils that their people committed. Yeah. Like, hey, we did this. We're teaching you this so that it doesn't happen again. And America, yeah. for some reason, feels the need to be like, hey, first of all, <laughs> we should hear both sides of the story. We don't know everything yeah. that went down. We don't know why specifically right. this happened. Look, man, this, this is this is a bad, a bad time. That the we Marvel don't, What I, If episode. <laughs> honestly, like what if we allowed all of this to happen? Yeah. What if we find out everything that needs to be known about these people? Which, if, like, I, I listen to this one podcaster, he mainly talks about wrestling, but sometimes he'll get into, like, political bag. And uh, he's from the South, but he's, like, super liberal or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's, like, from Kentucky. And he's, like, if you're a Nazi in America and you're a Republican, that goes against everything because we were fighting them. You're supposed to be pro-America. You're supposed yeah. to be pro... If you love America that much or that much of a patriot... You're supposed to hate the, the Nazis or whatever they stood for in the 1940s because it was the opposite of what we stood for. It was the complete opposite of what we stood for. So you're supposed to hate them, but now, for whatever reason, it's getting twisted around to where yeah. it's like, oh, you know what, maybe you yeah, they got a point. <laughs> it's like, what? There was no points being made. <laughs> Yeah, I made the joke. I'm like, KKK enrollment numbers got to be down because we because now they're making Nazi uh, sympathizers, essentially. Like, that's the only explanation I could think of because what would even make you... Like, when you hear both sides, like... Because even when I was learning about the Holocaust in high school, well, mostly high school, because they didn't really want to touch on it too heavy in middle school, but they, they spoke about... They described Hitler. They described the type of leader he was and how he was able to get so many people to follow him. They spoke about his charisma and how well he was with speaking with crowds and talking to people and, and this that and the third very similar to when people were talking about like with, with manson like how he was able to get so many people to just follow and do whatever he says but they didn't they, like nobody cared after that they was like okay he was really good with words they had a bunch of sheep essentially to do his bidding no, nobody wants to know anything really deeper than that with that like i don't i don't think i would want my kids just outright just like hey you need to find out what was what was going on to see if we can really find out who was right or wrong. Like maybe there's something that we didn't know about. There's some missing details that we should probably look up. Like, excuse me, like what are we doing here? I don't know, man. That whole that whole thing it, it, it's a funky situation to me personally. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, a crazy situation. Keep an eye out on it, but it really doesn't affect us at this moment. 
Nah, I don't. I don't think it was spread this way, but it may end up heading back down south. I'm not sure. It always goes down south. <laughs> <laughs> oh, A wild man. time we're living in, y'all. It wild is. And, uh, uh, we could wrap it up with uh, Mr. Uh, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Yes. Um, wild so, boy Vince. Yep. Uh, so, Mr. Uh, Chairman and uh, owner and CEO, or I guess former CEO now of uh, WWE, a lot of things we all grew up on. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I think we made it, we might have talked about it, but now it came to light that he's been paying, having sex with women, or maybe even abusing them, and then paying them hush money and NDAs and whatnot. And... I think there's been four, and I think the total is twelve million. So now, it's three million basically per person, which, if you're a wrestling fan, is insane because <laughs> if you know about because if you if you if you know like about wrestling, um, in the '90s and like the early 2000s, there's this company called WCW, yeah, where is where Goldberg World was, Hulk Hogan, Scott Hall, like 16, Nash, right? Eddie Guerrero, yeah. And it, that's where all of them were. And he bought that, I believe, for either $1 million or $2 million. So pocket so, change. Like, like the whole company, he bought the company and bought all the wrestlers' contracts out from that company. So WWE would be the only wrestling company in the world. Well, not in the world, but in the United States. So he's paying more to have sex, sex or sexual relations with said women. <laughs> he paid for a company full of staff and wrestlers and TV time and all that. And he clearly needs to get his money back because that them NDAs did not work. I don't know what All right. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know who he had to write those up, but the fact that we was able to find it on Twitter, Bleacher Report put it out of all people. Bleacher yeah. Report then put out the fact that you couldn't keep your Jimmy in your pants. And you Which, didn't pay you didn't pay 16 million or however many million to keep this on the hush hush. You need to go yeah. get your money back, Playboy. You need to claim it on your taxes or something, because that, that that did not work. Which is crazy with a Bleacher Report, because if you follow the wrestling, from my wrestling fans out there who follow the backstage politics or the T or whatever, mm-hmm. if you notice, whenever Bleacher Report posts something wrestling related that is like, oh, awesome, you should watch this, you should watch the show, it's AEW. So whenever they, you see them on their page, they post AEW stuff that when it's like, oh, this is a crazy flip or this crazy move happened or this wrestler returned, it's always AEW. But whenever it's like some drama or behind the stage that could slander somebody, it's always WWE. Yep. So people are starting to think that like either Tony Khan, Tony Khan is uh, the owner of AEW. And he's also the owner of uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars or part yes. owner, I think, with his dad. So people are thinking that like since he has that sports pool already, that he's like in cahoots with Bleacher Report to put out anything to take down WWE. So that's just like another layer to it. Yeah. So my theory but, is the oh, fact that because AEW uh comes on on CBS, which is under Turner, and I believe Bleacher Report <laughs> is also uh with Turner because a lot of like reporters that do stuff with Bleacher Report uh. usually exclusively do stuff with T- with TNT. Like anytime anything is live on TNT, Bleacher Report is super quick to make sure that they make a post about it whenever some. That's like the quickest they ever post. They usually late with oh, everything okay. else, every other highlight. But when it's some TNT related. Or CBS, if it's the PGA or whatever, Bleacher Report is on it. So I think it's all like about the ownership. Oh, see, if I, had to, I yeah, didn't know that. I, yeah, I think that's what it is. Uh, so that makes that makes sense to me. That's my theory is because AEW shows up on Turner, and I believe this is I'm not 100 sure, but I think Turner e- either owns Bleacher Report or they got something going on with them because they always get their reports first. So I think that yeah. ha- that's how. And so it's like you said. Now it's like, hey, go ahead and uh, make fun of Big Bro for us real quick. And like you right. said, Miss McMahon start <laughs> acting up. First, first, first people I hear from is Bleacher Report. <laughs> like so, yeah. yeah so it, and it gets like crazier because all this came out. I think the first one came out because the chick had told their best friend about it, mm-hmm. and the best friend is the one who leaked it. So I don't know. Like I said, I don't know how NDAs work. That maybe she could tell, like maybe her closest person. But I have no idea. I highly doubt because NDAs yeah. are not supposed to tell anybody. At least from anybody. what I know of. But. Yeah, I don't know how that worked out. But now Vince McMahon, he had to step down from CEO. 
and they added um not the CEO is his daughter Stephanie McMahon but a couple months ago she had uh she had quit she had stepped down from like the company in general she wanted to spend time with her kids mm-hmm. and also like maybe four or five months ago Triple H had that like heart attack or whatever so he had to retire completely and he had also gave up his duties in like the board and like the office with so now he's bringing them back in uh triple h has like a heart pacer or whatever they're called now mm-hmm. like i don't know if it's permanent but at least for now he has to have it in so i know his stress levels went up because now he has to be in charge of this whole company out of nowhere yeah. and then stephanie who wanted to be with uh her husband which is triple h and her kids now she got oh, sucked back yeah, in and yeah, also yeah. has to do these shenanigans yeah that's that's crazy because <laughs> it's like now, this is oh, the first time and Vince no, McMahon... Not to cut you off, sorry, but to, to add on, Vince McMahon, I think at the beginning of this year, fired his son, Shane. If you remember Shane McMahon, who used to, he fired him from the company. Oh, wow. For whatever reason happened backstage. So now it's like, all right. <laughs> it's, 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 just, all it's, it's, a cluster, it's a cluster of mess right now. And, I mean, this isn't the first time Vince McMahon got into some hot water with women, though. So it's kind of nah. like the fact that this was bad enough to where they was like, yeah, you might have to step down, playboy. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's you, you definitely up to some nefarious shenanigans. Yeah. Especially um, now with all the uh, Twitter sleuths, because yeah. one of the people was is the is a wrestler. Well, was a wrestler, a uh, female wrestler, oh. and the fans, they, I think they narrowed it down, at least to one specific person, because supposedly it was this wrestler who had his like who was winning a lot and then out of nowhere just stopped showing up on TV and then got fired. So fans did their homework and they found it's this one uh, uh, wrestler or her, her, her diva at the time they were called. It was Christy Hemme. I show y'all a picture. She was, she was bad. She was fine. <laughs> but, yeah, and she got fired at, at the same time that supposedly these allegations happened and supposedly she was winning a lot and then she automatic she just randomly got like put off TV and then fired. Hmm. So people are they narrowed it down to her. Hmm, very suspicious. Very suspicious yeah. behavior. But uh, yeah. So you know, if you if you gonna commit nefarious deeds, make sure your NDAs are secure. Make sure your money is going into the right places because all four of them they got released. So business man, make better uh life and and business yeah. investments. All right. Uh, is there anything write on a napkin. About <laughs> right on a napkin. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it with you. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, hey, right. hey, you remember what you did? Remember what you said? Can't talk about that. Yeah, oh, man. But is there anything else uh, you guys need to talk about before we get up out of here? Nah, man. Katie right. to the Bulls. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Katie, uh, Kobe White, and Jones. Straight up. <laughs> straight up. <laughs> oh, real quick. Do y'all see like the Nets? They pulling a Ben Simmons. They asking for like everything. Like they yep. they, they talk to uh Minnesota. So the, they was like, yeah, we want Cat, we want Anthony Edwards, we want, I think, four, four first round four picks. First round. Like, sir, mm-hmm. sir, come on now. They can't yeah, do nothing right. You can't even negotiate correctly. Like, at this point, just keep him and hope that he stay and play the whole year at, at, at this point. But, yeah, that, that whole thing is nuts. But uh, we thank y'all for tuning in to yet another exhilarating installment of the Friendly Fire podcast. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please hit us up at friendly underscore fire on IG and friendly fire on TikTok. Once again, friendly underscore fire on IG and friendly fire on TikTok. Like, share, and subscribe on the YouTube channel, the friendly fire podcast, YouTube channel. Uh, Excuse me. For those who may want to come onto the podcast, you can also DM us at those same social media sites. G baby getting ready to get up out of here. Uh, we thank y'all for, t- we th- <laughs> we thank y'all for tuning in uh, on behalf of my boys. I am Rico. G baby, zoo, friendly fire, be blessed. <laughs>